What is up, my magento loving peeps? Joseph here with another practice test question of the week. This one is going to be interesting, and it's a interesting perspective on performance optimization. So we could jump jump in, but first I want to quickly call your to your remembrance the Swift Otter Certification Challenge, which is actually coming close to wrapping up, but we have two more weeks of our presentations and our conversations. SwiftOtter.com slash challenge. You'll find the information, the links there. But it's really cool this week, Friday, 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. We're going to be getting together in our study groups, one focused on each of the major Magento tests led by brilliant people. And I hope you're able to join us there. So let's jump into the question. You are doing a performance review and you see a service class in a third party module. Fair enough. Uh, this contains an expensive SQL query. <laughs> Uh, yup, I, I, I can get, I get where this is going and it makes a lot of sense. This query is executed in the construct method. Ah, ouch. Okay. Uh, I could start naming names, but we'll just, we'll stop right there. Okay. So let's, let's keep moving on before I, before something slipped out of my mouth. Uh, this code is executed on every page request, even though the class is directly called in the customer account area keeping simplicity in mind. How do you resolve this? Hmm. I'm sorry, guys and gals. I have seen this way too often. And it's unfortunate and it's terrible. So let's take a look at some of the answers that are provided. And one thing I want to call out here is that we will probably come up with an even better answer than what is provided here. But we're taking a test, guys and gals. And we have to abide within the three or four answers that is written on the test. So we have to choose the best answer. Now, one other thing is here, this is giving us a small uh, hint as far as our selection criteria, and that is this, keeping simplicity in mind. What's the simplest answer? What is the fastest, quickest, easiest answer to resolve this problem? All right, so let's look at the answers with this criteria in mind. Change to using the factory for this class will so load a new instance every time, number one. Now, let's examine this fully. So if we could change using a factory class, uh, but that's going to involve some composer patching, uh, maybe an override. Okay, so maybe would that work? Okay, I mean, if we push out some of the technical challenges of maintainability. Maintainability was not listed in this list, so simplicity, okay? Uh... What does a factory do? Well, a factory is an auto-generated class in Magento that then is utilized to create another class. Uh, an extension of this would be in DIXML, we can mark a class as shareable false. And you can do it on a class, in, an injection basis, or you can do it on a global basis. And you'll see a couple examples in those in app at CDIXML. So if code is run in the constructor, Marking something to be shareable is false basically says it's not going to be loaded from the central object manager repository. It's actually going to be loaded in from, or every time, brand new. So in effect, option number one, and by its extension of it, would actually increase the, perform increase the exposure of this problem overall. Uh, so that acts as it right there. Like, there's no more consideration of one. That's done. All right. Move on to number two. Specify a proxy class so the dependency is only instantiated when it is called. Now, how would we specify proxy class? Well, there's two ways. One, we could go use a composer patch, and we could add, what, backslash proxy to the end of our, the dependency where this is utilized. That would work. The other thing is we can go into our own module that is named after the module we are uh, replicating or working or working to fix the performance issues there. And uh, we could actually go in and map, remap that around to utilize the proxy. That sounds interesting. Well, what's a proxy? Well, a proxy is basically this firewall between the code that is running and actually initializing or instantiating this object. We typically think of it as re re with relation to sessions. So, um, we want to only initialize a session when it's actually necessary or needed. And 
yet accession is injected into quite a few classes all throughout the Magento code base. So only when we actually need to get the customer ID do we then end up calling this customer session. It loads up this the proxy, then says, oh, customer session has not been initialized, this object. We're going to go initialize it, and now we can access call the get ID method on this customer session. Kind of that firewall. It's a, a, a air break, a, um, a barrier between the um, the incoming request or the code that kind of is utilizing it and actually not initializing this object. So that sounds like a really reasonable option right there. Number three, use a virtual type in DIXML to disable the class. I'm honestly not aware of a way to disable a class with a with virtual type in DIXML. Okay. Uh, and ultimately, I will, I will call this out. I find it's very difficult to write four super good answers. Uh, most of the Adobe tests are now are, are three answers. And so you could you usually can eliminate, if you're even taking one of our practice tests, there's often somewhat reasonable to eliminate just one option just because sometimes it's really tough to come up with that fourth one. So in that same way, you could, some of them it is very much reasonable and others, it's been just really, really difficult to write that fourth answer. So it, it brings it 100% in line with the Adobe tests if you eliminate that fourth answer, but some of them it makes it even harder because that fourth answer exists. So kind of uh, goes both ways. So look at number four here. I'll create a bash script to separately execute the intensive SQL query and cache the results. This is a very reasonable answer. In fact, it might be a good or the best answer overall. Here's why. If we have this bash script and it runs so, so every so often, we get the latest results cached. That would work, but is that the simplest option? Is it simpler than just using a proxy class? <laughs> Heck no. I mean, there's no way it's, it's simpler to do that. So that's where two would win out over four here in this case, B versus D. Now, one other thing to mention is that you might have thought of when you read this question, well, we just need to build something like an indexer. We have all of this data coming from these different places. We need to build an indexer, kind of flatten it out into one table. And that's a good option too, just like the sales order grid table. That would work well. And the only problem is, is long-term maintenance of that can be a bit of a bear. In my experience, it can be kind of challenging. So at the end of the day, uh, I think two is a very reasonable option. I would also want to look to make sure that there's the database tables are properly configured. There's indexes on the right. Uh, there's indexes in the proper places. And remember, one little final uh, hint here, and just here's the uh, here's the answers once one more time. One other final hint is this: the explain keyword. Once you pull that query out, and you can run it in your SQL browser, uh, your SQL tool, uh, add the word explain to the beginning of that SQL query. Super simple. And it pulls up the list of all the tables that are included, whether it's using an index, how many rows are being scanned, et cetera, et cetera. It's really powerful. And actually, this last week, there was a table that I don't remember had at least 500,000 rows, and it. it was a pretty good-sized table. There was a lot of metadata associated with it. And I uh, discovered that this was actually being called via the API. And so it was easy to miss the fact that some of these requests were taking three to five seconds to execute, when in reality it didn't need to take anywhere near that. Well, the reason was there was no indexes on the right columns in this table. Uh, super simple uh, fix like that, and immediately we have a, a significant performance enhancement right there. So uh, here is your practice test question of the week with a bit extra commentary, but I hope that you found that helpful.